We've taken the hikes off. The market's starting to price a small probability sometime in early 2020 of cuts, but it's not fully there. Having said that, I'd argue that Fed's next move is likely to be a cut and will probably be in early 2020. You think it's because there's a slowdown here <clears throat> or because there's no inflation? It's a, combina it's a combination of two things. We're past the peak in the growth rate of the economy. We're downshifting from three something to two something. Well, we did for a quarter, <clears throat> but are you convinced you're that's on your growth? You're on your growth. So last year, I'm guessing we were over three. Okay. Which is the best since 05. But then in uh, 2019, we'll slow further. And then inflation pressures are moderating. Um, vendor deliveries, prices paid, bottlenecks, all the things in the industrial side are much weaker. And historically, when that happens, the Fed cuts. All right. So, Kenny, markets, uh, stocks have actually been doing quite nicely to start off this year after J Jay Powell sort of signaled uh, this was coming, took his you know, the foot off the, the pedal. Uh, is this, you know, if we start talking about the job openings number this morning, the strong jobs report last month, are we so sure rate cuts are coming? No, no, so I don't think rate cuts are coming at all. I might agree with you that I think they do nothing. I think they, they might back off the whole rate hike thing in 2019, but I think rates are so artificially low. I mean, look, let's, let's be honest. Rates are still artificially low compared to kind of what they are at normal, right? And I don't see the country or the world, the global economy, going into this crisis mode, so I don't see how you can really talk about or how the Fed could all of a sudden come out and talk about cutting rates, because honestly, I think that sends a very different message to the, to the investing uh, to the investing world, right? Because if they start cutting rates sure. at this point, uh, so I think I think the next move is nothing, uh, and so and and, I, and then beyond that, then I think rates start to go up again. I don't I don't see a rate cut. Is that can stocks do okay in that environment that you're describing? I think stocks can do okay because I actually think the U.S. economy is okay. The global economy might be coming into a little bit of a a little bit of a recession, but I think we avoid that. I think mm -hmm. you know if we slow down a little bit, but I don't think we I don't see a recession for us in 2019. Um, if we if we start talking on 2020, I guess you know any anything could happen. But I think actually stocks could do very well in this environment. Yeah, I mean, look, um, rates are definitely low historically. There's no question about it, and it means that probably whenever we have the next recession, it'll be modest because rates are low relative to nominal growth. But if you take Europe for example, or even Japan, you've had recessions with very low rates. Italy is in recession, uh, and Europe looks very weak. Germany close to a recession, a technical recession. So Japan. rates rates are low. But uh, look, rates of change also matter. And we had mortgage rates, as you know, Kenny, up I almost had an eight-year high earlier last yeah, year. You know what's really funny? It's an eight-year high, and you got these millennial, these this millennial group that are now in the in the business of buying houses that go to the Thinking bank. Rates and, are too and high because they're four and a half percent, and they're right. sitting there scratching their head, going, "Oh my God!" <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm sitting there. When I first bought my house, they were fifteen percent down from twenty, and I thought I got a deal. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, and, no, I hear you, but look, it's but, all relative. But, it's all relative. but this is the thing: the psychology. Look at German bond yields; they're on twenty basis points. Right. So they're barely that, positive. So they're barely positive, and much of the curve is still negative. So, right. it, but this is truly a new world post oh eight in, in terms of where yields are and psychology Joe, what becomes would happen, important. The one scenario people haven't seemed to be positioned for is that growth continues, but inflation doesn't come. You know, everyone has been so binary. Okay. Sure. Either it's growth on and inflation's coming and the Fed has to raise. No, what if it's the expansion continues, there's right. no inflation, they don't have to raise sure. rates. Sure, I mean, look, what? my guess is the Fed could ease rates in 2020 just as a check on what it sees as inflation being too low. And you still get growth in the business cycle extends, in part because while it's been a long business cycle, uh, I'd argue there's still a lot of pent-up demand because you have not seen the excesses in terms of the spending and the investment that typically categorize a business cycle. Right. And, and Kenny, I was just about to say, this is basically the longest expansion, I think, once it goes past, past September. Well, it, it will be the longest <laughs> expansion. But look, for, for eight years, we had almost zero interest rates in this country, right, which is kind of what fueled that. It's only been the last couple of years where we've started to try to normalize, but yet we're still doing okay. The economy is still doing fine. Yeah, you could say the tax cuts, that was a boost. I get it. Um, but I do think that there's a sense that I think that the U.S. economy feels okay. And so, and uh, so I think it's, when, would you say, and we, before, last thing here, we own everything, own the S&P, or, or is there something more tactical that you would recommend? No, well, <laughs> so I think you have to, so it's fine to have a diversified portfolio, but I also think you have to be just a little bit as we move into through 19 into 2020, maybe become a little bit more defensive. So you want to take names like consumer staples and some utilities just in there a little bit to help stabilize, right? Because right. you don't really know what's going to happen. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and a rate cut doesn't mean the end of the bull market. I'm just saying that's just what I think right. the Fed will do in response to a very tame inflation Amazing. backdrop.